Hello everyone and welcome to our weekly reflection. Again, happy Easter and may God bless you all. We are Easter people. We are people of the resurrection. Now on this um, reflection, I'd like to talk about the Pope's intention for April, which is, and as he's in our hymnal, fundamental rights. So we pray for those who risk their lives while fighting for fundamental rights under dictatorships, authoritarian regimes, and even in democracies in crisis. We think, for example, we think of the people of Myanmar at this time. And there are Christians and faith people there and other people that are standing up for the rights of democracy. So we pray especially for the people of Myanmar at this time. And Pope Francis is calling us. And these um, intentions are very powerful because he wants us to pray for the gift of courage and determination and understanding which really come from the Holy Spirit. They are they are beautiful gifts of the Holy Spirit. And he's asking us to pray for and really think about how we can actively combat poverty, inequality, unemployment, land and housing issues, and denial of social and labor rights. That's uh, all in the social teaching of the past many popes. For example, Pope Francis is inviting us all people, that all people of goodwill are to pray for all people, for all rights fundamentally, that people are equal. All of us are equal under God's sight. And what the church teaches us or calling us to do, and he's quite sad about, that there's inequality in workplaces against men and women. Uh, there are first, second, and third, and those disposable people that are not uh, always first class because they get demoted or they get um, disenfranchised because of who they are, where they live, what they do, and even what their faith is. So the Pope is calling us to pray for that every human being has a right to develop fully and fundamental right that cannot be denied by any dictatorship, by any democracy, or by any country. And we're called to pray for those places where there's inequality. We think of places in Syria right now, Myanmar, uh, the Holy Land. There are many places where, in our own country, where there's inequality. And we are called to sacrifice and pray for them. We also think about those two men in China at this time, the two, Golden, the two Michaels, that are being held captive there. We pray for their release. We pray that those in prison throughout the world who are praying for justice and are in, in there because they're trying to make their place a better world, uh, oftentimes they're in jails. And we have to go to prisons. And we have to pray for them because they're in danger of death. And again, by these places, and again, by their faith has put them there, or by human rights has put them there, or for other reasons. And we're called in the name of Jesus Christ, who made everybody equal. Everybody was equal in his sight. And that is something, too, that we do in our Development of Peace a program in Canada. It's a program to see the developing world, the third world, as uh, people of goodness. And that we have to keep supporting the developing world because they are the ones that are, in a sense, our future for some of us. So the most important thing, my brothers and sisters, is we pray for equality. We pray for human rights. We pray for people that are been disenfranchised, disadvantaged, that are struggling to get jobs or to go and practice their faith. Or, um, especially now with the pandemic throughout the world, there are places where, for example, women who are being targeted uh, in their homes even because of inequality. So the most important thing is we as uh, Jesus followers of the resurrection, we are called to love, we are called to be open, and we're called to pray, uh, especially if I'm in Myanmar at this time, that people will not die for uh, a democracy will not be dying for equal rights and not die for humanity. So we pray that God will watch over us and guide us. St. Teresa, our patroness, will watch over us. And in unity and fraternity, which was the uh, prayer intention for January, we pray for God's grace to watch over us and watch over those that are struggling in our world. May God bless you all, and we'll see you next week. Happy Easter. We are people of the resurrection. May God bless you. Amen.
hello and good day, everyone. So for me to reflect on my brothers and sisters, what's really important I want to share with you is something that's specific for this week. This week, this past week, and this current week, we are celebrating the more than 100 years of the week of prayer for Christian unity. And what's really important is that each one of us in the parish, each one of us in our community, if we call ourselves Christian, that we're called, we're asked by all the churches to pray for a closer relationship between our congregations. I really believe in Elmira, we have a lot of beautiful things that go on that bring us together as Christian communities. But we're also very different. And God really wants us to become closer. Whether we are a Christian that goes to church or not goes to church. But the most important thing as my brothers and sisters is, is that we pray for those in need. We pray for maybe less fortunate Christians, or we pray for ones that are struggling with their faith right now. That whether they're Catholic, Lutheran, Mennonite, Presbyterian, Pentecostal, Reformed, or any congregation. Or also, in another way, we pray for unity amongst denominations. Whether we're Muslim, Jewish, or other faiths, other denominations. That we are to abide with God, and as Christians, abide in Christ. So the theme this year is, Abide in my love, and you shall bear much fruit. John, the Gospel, 15, verses 5 to 9. This observance amongst all Christian communities started in 1896. So for over a hundred years we've been praying that we'd become one church eventually. Somebody gets, gets discouraged. Some won't pray for this. But I've learned many things from my brothers and sisters uh, of other faiths and other denominations. We as a Amara community meet monthly to help each other with needs in our congregations, with concerns to address, for example, homelessness or poverty or mental illness, that each one of us can help each other. How can we help each other as Christian communities? Now in this pandemic, we pray from home. We can pray for guidance. We can pray for our brothers and sisters. And we can ask for God's help. We know that each one of us is here for a reason. And we can pray for the gift of ongoing conversion through prayer, through reconciliation, through unity in our human family. We're all humans. We're all humans under God and under Christ, most of us that can call ourselves Christians. But we pray fervently that God will restore unity to the Christian church. We ask God to watch over us that uh, together, to united, we are stronger. Divided, we become not so much enemies, but we become maybe strangers. So let us keep praying for unity amongst our Christian brothers and sisters. And knowing that God wants to watch over us, and knowing that one day we will, we will, we will, will be closer. But now we're close by just being in a community that cares for one another. And Myra is a beautiful Christian community that cares for one another. So be assured of my prayers for the other con Christian congregations. May God be with them in their efforts and in their struggles during these times of the pandemic. Knowing that together we are stronger. Together God will guide us. Together God will love us. May God be with you this week. Now also as well too, uh, Jeff and I were discussing that we're hoping in the future to have more um, sessions on themes, also maybe some question and answer times uh, once a month in our reflection, but we're hoping to have maybe some um, Zoom meetings on different topics. So we're looking at having a Zoom orientation that you can learn how to Zoom and go on Zoom so that you can be part of a session here in the church. So. Uh, be um, assured that we're going to work on that, do a Zoom workshop online, and then it gets you more prepared for sessions here in the church. Again, may God watch over you, pray for us, and we'll pray for you. May God bless you all this week.
See you next week. Bye for now, and you're in my prayers. God bless. January 2021. Who would have thought this day would have come? We were all hoping that the COVID would have been over by now, but apparently that's not the case. The reason why I'm speaking to you is because you probably know Pope Francis has a prayer calendar and he designates each month to a particular topic. And this month's topic is unification of all religions, all churches. So, and I think this is an excellent idea because we are strong as a one united church. And this is what, this is the dream of Pope Francis. And it should be the dream for all of us because Jesus didn't come to save this group or that group or the Catholics or the Protestants or the Baptists. No, he came to save all of us. And he treats us as brothers and sisters and we should treat each other as brothers and sisters. And as Christians, we do that. We have a little bit of differences between what we believe and what we don't believe. But, you know, God can unite us. The Holy Spirit can unite us. So this is where we are today. This month, Pope Francis has asked us to pray for this fellowship and gathering. So let us pray for this. Gracious Father, I ask you to send your Holy Spirit down upon the peoples of the world. I ask you to fill their hearts with love and wisdom that they may know and understand that there is only one God. There is only one spiritual leader for us all, and that is Jesus. He came to unite us. And we look around and we see we have fragmented all over the world. People believe in this and that and all the rest of it. But gracious Father, to help us to become one, we need your grace and we need your blessing and we need your help. So may the Lord give us the grace to live in full fellowship with our brothers and sisters of other religions for one another and open to all. Gracious Father, fill our minds with wisdom that we may understand that united in you we stand strong and firm united with your church we are strong gracious father with this wisdom help us to understand your word and to do your word to follow your word and to live your word and just by doing that father we will realize that we need to be together to do that. For Jesus came not to save one person or one group. He came to save the whole of humanity. Gracious Father, I ask you to fill our hearts with love, everyone, Father, that we may love you and we may love ourselves so that we may live in that love that Jesus gave us. Father, I ask you to help us to unite Help us to grow closer together so that we may become one in your Son, Jesus. Father, I ask all of this through your Son, Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. So, there we have it. Let's live in the hope that one day, soon, we will all be united, praising and glorifying the one Father in heaven. Praising and glory his son, glorifying his son Jesus who, who unites us by our baptism, by his love for us, by his desire to do the will of his Father. His Father wants us to come to him. Jesus came down to bring us to him. Let us not falter now in these difficult times. Let us be strong. Let us be determined to follow what we believe. Let nothing shake your faith. Let nothing stop you on your journey to everlasting life. God bless you all. God bless our church.